Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. Rogue. When's the last time I drank a Rogue beer? I do not know. When's the last time I reviewed a, a Rogue beer? That I do know. It was practically eight years ago. And it was actually a beer they sent to me. Um, yeah, Rogue. OG status. You know, not going to hate on Rogue and what they do. They do a lot. They had a lot to do with the growth of craft beer in, um, in the U.S. But, you know, they've, at least for me, maybe you're different and you can chime in on all this fun stuff. Um, they've kind of not moved the needle for me for quite some time. Um, you know, their beers still exist. I still see them all over the place. I just don't really pick them up. You know, I, I, I should... Especially for the Massive Beer Review Classics portion of the show. Maybe pick up some Dead Guys, something along those lines. Um, and just kind of revisit them. That would be fun. But, you know, just not really there. I mean, some of their beers back in the day, you know, I dug on quite a bit. Uh, XS, I think, was probably their best beer. But again, just not really... Just doesn't move anything for me. Then comes this. Um, in a little bottle shop, I see this 2024 Imperial Stout. 13.7%. Rolling Thunder. Horrible name. Um, and I'm like, you know what? A 13.7 Imperial Stout from, a, you know, relatively fresh 2024. It's got to be. When was it canned? It was canned in 2023, but yeah, anyway, December. So we're talking about, you know, five months in. And I read on it. It's actually barrel aged. Bonus. With their, with a barrel that came from their own distillery. Okay, you got me, Rogue. I'll buy a four pack. We'll see what's what. Again, our radar's up. We're curious to see where this one goes, but open minds. Clear hearts, clear eyes, full hearts, open minds can't lose. Um, what's on the can here? It's very, very tiny. You can screenshot that if you want and read it because I'm probably going to butcher half of it. Um, anyway, it says, Our 2024 Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout was aged for nine months. Six is like bare minimum for me, so nine months. Nine months in handmade Rolling Thunder Barrel Works barrels previously used to age our dead guy whiskey. This one-of-a-kind Imperial Stout can be enjoyed right away or cellared for years. Either way, it's best shared among friends. Rolling Thunder Barrel Works is our barrel-making operation located next to the Rogue Brewery and Distillery in Newport, Oregon. Um, as the only brewer distiller cooper in the country, we plane, trim, joint, hoop, hammer, bend, toast, coze, bevel, shape, shaw, saw, sand, cauterize, and char, Oregon, oak, and other wood uh, varieties in an effort to produce about one barrel each day. They got this little graph on here. It's like malt, roast, oak. Oh, excuse me. Um, fruit and vanilla. And they give you this kind of like, like video game-esque kind of chart um, with malt leading the way. Vanilla. Coming up second place. What else do we have on here? Um, why don't I just shake the shit out of the can? Um, just tossing it around like a goddamn goofball. 12 ounce can. Um, let's, I'm curious. Okay, can, um, okay. I was, is cellared for whatever I thought they might have a Best Buy date. It actually says, want to chat, text us. So it says 541-819-0449 on the bottom. So anybody's bored, if you just want to text them, text them. That would be quite fun. Tell them you're watching this review. Um, Yeah. I actually like the label design. I think Rolling Thunder is a very, very horrible name. It reminds me of just some cheap knockoff biker gang or something like that. But again, open minds. Let's see how much this fizzes because I'm just shaking around like a goddamn maniac. Okay. Not too bad. Here we go. Okay. I mean, it's not going to be confused with Florida thick. But, yeah. Anyways, again, gold, black, it's going to work for me. Beer-wise, I mean, that looks nice. You know, it looks like a nice Imperial Stout. Again, not going to be confused with anything ultra-hyper-thick, but it has this nice kind of elevated beyond malted malt ball colored head to it. Dissipating pr pretty quickly. Looks very much like soda. Let's put it that way. If you've had like a, an extra fizzy Coca-Cola or Pepsi, it's exactly what it looks like. And just this nice dark brownish rich dark brownish body i mean it's not black 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 it's not super thick 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 but it looks the part of a stout dare i say a nice barely stout 
I say spill stuff everywhere. Because that's what I do. I drink beer and spill things. Clean. Ish. Uh, let's get a nose. Mm. Not gonna lie to you. Smells pretty darn good. Nice to roast the maltiness to it. A hefty ton of chocolate to it. A little bit of toastiness to it. Spirit is really represented here. A lot of vanilla. So when they're doing this kind of malt vanilla thing coming up one, two, they're not joking at least aromatically. Really nice kind of dollop of vanilla. I don't know if Oregon's got these super vanilla based kind of oak jams going on up there, but yeah, they're working on it. Um, and it just has this really nice kind of like generic spirit. It's, it's whiskey, generic whiskey, but again, I'm not pooping on that. It's a nice smelling whiskey. Everything comes off. Whiskey is nice. Vanilla is beautiful. Roasted malt chocolate combination is quite nice. The only thing I would probably just kind of dig at if I'm looking for nitpicks at this point is the barrel outside of the vanilla. I want a little bit more kind of charriness to it or something along those lines. Well, it's there. It's not necessarily like jumping out at me. But again, you give this to me as a mystery bear and I smell this and I think this smells like a really nice barrel aged stout. Again, I don't know if I've ever had anything barrel aged from Rogue. Um, if I had, it's not kind of jogging my memory, which means it probably wasn't great. This smells pretty darn good. So let's dive in. Cheers, y'all. damn tasty I got no idea again those thoughts of coca-cola of, of, of soda pop that comes to mind with this beer quite a bit um, it has a spritzy carbonation to it listen we're just gonna pump the brakes and go negative from the get it's not gonna win any awards for mouthfeel here um, I'm not gonna say it's criminally thin but it's thinner than what you'd want in a pushing 14% Imperial Stout, Barrel Age Imperial Stout. You want something a bit denser here, but it's not like thin, 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 but it's thinner than what we want. But once you take that bit of information, throw it in your pocket, and think about it, everything here is pretty darn tasty. You know? Um, there's a nice bittering here. It definitely has... And wait, I was just going to say Russian Imperial Stout vibes. That's not it. The bittering from this beer comes from a combination of the barrel... That charriness, that toasty, smoky, chocolatiness that I dig so much. A bit of that and roasted malts. So it's not saying the hops aren't at play here. The hops didn't provide a bit of this bittering. But from my palate and the way I taste it, it very much comes from a malt barrel combination, which is quite nice. The beer, again, chocolatey, rich, semi-sweet chocolate. A little bit of kind of a sarsaparilla slash molasses -y thing going on here, which I kind of dig. Go to the other side of things. The spirit portion of the show, again, we're still sticking with like a relatively generic whiskey here. I'm not saying that in a negative way, but it's quite nice. The spirit has a little bit of spice to it, a la rye, but I don't think that's the case. I just think it's a younger whiskey, uh, thinking like almost like Canadian whiskey kind of vibes to it. Again, not negative, but just a bit different than a richer, older age bourbon or scotch or something like that. But a really start of the show here, again, is that oak, I think. That vanilla comes out in spades. When you take that chocolate you take that little bit of charriness that spiciness from both barrel and malt and then you add all that vanilla from that oak it makes for a really wonderful combination um and honestly not gonna lie to you not too shabby of a beer i should probably not say it that way because i think it's worth saying better than that and being it's a darn good uh imperial stout but you're talking about some, a brewery that, you know, I've had little to no experience with the barrel aging, but one has been kind of interwoven with my beer DNA since I got into beer in the late 90s. You know, Rogue's been around forever. And it's just really weird to, to have a beer like this from them now when they've been so... 
I don't know how to put it. It's like they're, they're the the best way I could put it is the newspaper industry. Um, you know, a lot of newspaper industries, uh, newspapers, I should say, or the industry as a whole, but more often, you know, newspapers, you know, they've kind of fought back a bit um, with online content and, you know, um, for better or worse, paywalls and, and all these things. And they kind of eschewed the internet as a joke and just like, we're going to do us, we're, we do, we, we do us, we do what we do and we're really good at what we do and people will always come to us for what we do. Dogfish head. Rogue. There's breweries that really do think that way. Um, and some of them gone the way of the dodo. Um, and, you know, some have fought back. Um, you know, Dogfish Head is trying. Rogue seems to be trying, at least with this beer. Um, and that's a good thing. Old, old, I shouldn't say old. Because, um, you know, you have Wine Henstefan or, you know. Um, old U.S. breweries, OG U.S. breweries should be around. Because they serve, a, they have a purpose. And for them to bring new vibes to the table like this, I think is quite welcoming. At least for me. I think it's tasty. I think it's fun. It lacks a little bit of mouthfeel to it, but it shows really pretty both on the malt, the barrel, the spirit kind of side of things. And honestly, for 20 bucks a four pack, it's not that expensive. Do I pick this above Bourbon County? No. I'm trying to think of other readily available. Do I pick this above... KBS. That's how we buy founders. Probably not. Well, yeah, I would just because of the company, but as far as flavor goes, probably not. Do I pick this above Dragon's Milk? And I'm saying, you know, on a barrel eight stout, I don't want to drop a ton of money. What's commercially decently readily available in the barrel eight stout section of the world? I think I think that's 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 the cutoff for me. Will I pick up um, uh, Dragon's Milk above this? Some days. I think some days I pick this up. I think some days I pick up Dragon's Milk up. I think I want a little bit of variance. That's where this kind of sits for me as far as commercially available beer. And I, I've talked about Dragon's Milk. I've talked about it. It'd be one of the better, you know, commercially readily available stouts you can buy. Dragonville probably ekes it at price point again. I purchased it, so, uh, you know, I saw it one place. I don't know what its MSRP is, but it was 20 bucks. You know, Dragon's Milk typically for me, I can get like 16, 17 bucks. So there's definitely a price point kind of argument to be made for Dragon's Milk, but it's a fun beer, a tasty beer, and honestly, not gonna lie to you. Didn't expect this from Rogue. I didn't expect this level of tasty. Um, not that I didn't think they were capable of it, just, you know, they've been so off the radar, at least for me, for so long. It was more of a kind of, not a goof, because I don't want to trivialize beer like that. It's more of just a, you know, I, I want to see. I want to see what they're doing. It had 2024 written on it, so it's definitely year dated. So they're like, here's our 2024 beer. It's not Dead Guy. It's not this. It's not that. It's I've never seen it. The barrel eats out. 2024, come and get it. I came, I got it. I like it. So there you go. A review in the books. Um, so yeah, in the grand scheme of things, to recap, I think the spirit, the beer, and the barrel show up quite well here. As far as flavor is concerned, the only knock I would give it is mouthfeel. And uh, if I were to make any tweaks beyond mouthfeel, maybe go a little longer than nine months in that barrel. I think that might go a long way to solve a couple, uh, or cure a couple of these perceptional, perceived kind of ills. But in the grand scheme of things, I'd buy it again. I think it's tasty. You do you, Rogue. I'm here for it. Um, yeah. Is it one of the better barrel eight sets I've had as late? Sure. Not rush more status? No. But tasty nonetheless. I'm not, I don't have zero, I have zero issues buying this beer. And what I paid for it. Let's put it that way. Um... Value availability, 20 bucks off a shelf. But I've only saw it in one place. I don't know. Have you been able to buy it? Rogue Brewing. Have you had their beers? If you're watching this and you haven't had a Rogue beer, I think that's bizarrely weird. I know there's a lot of people gotten a beer over the past 5, 10 years. That's just, you know, newbies, whatever. No, I'm not saying in a negative sense. I heard like a gunfire or something. I don't know if it was going from something rattling while I was moving. Anyway, um... That would be weird. But um, have you had their beers? 
What's your favorite rogue beer? Have you had this beer? All that fun stuff. Let's talk about it down there. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of old school brewery stuff right now. Hope to see you next time. Cheers, y'all.